nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord, he who swears to his own hurt and does not change, he who does not put out his money as usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Let's pray. Father, this day we give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory. It's all yours, Lord. We're just a participant of your great mercy and grace that you shower upon us each and every day. Father, I thank you for this church. I thank you for this class. I pray for everyone that's in here, Lord, that you would meet their needs, their desires, and their wants, that you would be with each and every one of us, God. I thank you for this class. I thank you for the word that's taught to us each week. I thank you for all the blessings you bring upon us. I thank you for our pastor. I pray tonight that our teacher would um, bring a good lesson and uh, that you would use me to speak to the class tonight, God. We love you, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. That, um, I heard it came to the class, it came to our pastor, and then it came to me, referencing me. Um, so I just wanted to... Uh, explain what's going on. Um, I don't know if many of you know, but a lot of you know I've been in a relationship with Nancy Vertiz for four to six months. And uh, it's been a rock and rock and a roller coaster ride to say the least. And about six weeks ago, um, due to circumstances that no one could really control, she ended up pretty much uh, homeless. So I counsel with people that I trust and respect, people that I counsel with on many things in my life, including some pastors. And every one of them advised me against doing this, but I had her come live in my home. Um, we never had a sexual relationship. We, we made this known right from the beginning. And uh, I knew that it looked bad, of course, and, and, and God has placed me in a leadership role in many areas of my life, and I take that seriously. And um, there was a period of time where I really <coughs> was struggling with this. In fact, that was my testimony last week. Um, but anyway, you know, people have been talking, etc. So I just wanted to make the, the record straight. Uh, Nancy's no longer here. Um, she's no longer living with me, but at no time did we ever have a sexual encounter. And uh, so, like I said, I know it didn't look good, and I didn't like it, but I felt there was just no, no choice that we had. So, anyway, what I'm saying is, um, you know, as a leader of this class, um, I place my leadership in your guys' hands, and if anyone feels that, you know, I'm not fit to be a leader of this class, then I'll be very willing to step down. Um, and that has nothing to do with the fact that I'm actually leaving in three months for Colorado which I just found out. So I'm moving there with my daughter and my kids uh, and sometime in, between August and the end of the year. But uh, anyway, I just want to present that to the class. So if there was any questions, that's that's the story. Okay? Yes, Greg. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you.
of these sheets, or you don't have to sheet. Everybody? Okay. Okay, who's got, a, who's got a King James? Anybody? 
What's the King James say about the Son of God? Jesus, Son of God. Jesus, Son of God. Okay. How did they know he was Jesus, the Son of God? Because they knew him from the kingdom. I mean, unless they had internet and the tools. But <laughs> <laughs> Christian TV, you know. They were once angels once upon a time in the kingdom. Because just like David said tonight, it's not enough just to believe in him. The demons and Satan believes in him. They know he's real. They shudder, but they think he's Yeah. And also those which we're not going to go into, everybody knows the story where they said, don't kill us, let us run over to the pigs. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Why? They recognize his authority. Why, why would they want to go into the pigs? Because they, he had the power to cast them right into hell. And it's not the what way. happens to them if they don't have a physical avenue? They, to a body? They, kind of See, they, they would be destroyed. They have to. Uh, it's like, well, Okay, Medora, Medora's at, who, is anybody else in here that does the Thursday night class with Dr. Lemon beside Medora and I? Anybody else? Remember what he said? Satan doesn't always look today like the pictures we think. Sometimes it's in a suit and a tie Absolutely. or a pretty woman. A lot of times a pretty woman. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about here. Um, just to believe in him is not enough. The definition of a Christian is a Christ follower, not a Christ believer. Okay? okay. Are we all on the same page there? Uh -huh. Again, not my opinion. Oh, it is my opinion, but it's based on that. Now, what we're going to do here... I'm not going to open this door, I'm sure. Okay. We're going to review, because I don't have all of this on the screen, so... Just for those who weren't here two weeks ago, what we're doing is we're not creating a Christian belief system with this. We're not going to all sit down and write out our Christian belief system. There is a Christian belief system. What we need to do is know how to recognize it. So we're trying to see how we're going to recognize it. Now, what you have here, I don't have, I have the verses up here. I do not have uh, the explanations that's on your sheet, okay? I have the verse references on your sheet, but not the verses themselves. So we kind of got a mix here, and that's intentional. Number one, we're saving time, and number two, I want you to go home and read it, okay? Because don't take my word for it. What we did here is, is look at the Christian belief system that we're going to define and just not make it up to feel what, what do we think is a good fit. But we're going to try and recognize what should the Christian belief system be. And where are we going to get that? What's our authority? Right. Remember, every, every belief system we went through had their authoritative motive behind it. Like, where did they get it? We went through the Mormons, we went through Islam. You know, they all have references to where they could claim their authority, right? Okay. Christian belief system, where is the authority for the Christian belief system? The Bible. Scriptures. Scriptures, right? Okay, so what we did, well, what I did, okay, is we found Christian... The, the, the Christian belief system references that would apply to the different categories that we apply to everything else to see what should the Christian belief system be that we live by. Is that, is that okay? Does that make sense? What was that? What did I hear? Oh, chocolates. <laughs> okay, so we're not going to go through because we did, and I don't remember what slide number it was, we're going to get to it. Just a quick review for those who weren't here, you just have to go through it. We'll do it the front half. Or the, for those of you who have one page front and back, we did the front page. Okay. We're going to briefly just hit the topics. We're not going to go through it. Uh, the ones that haven't stapled is the second page. That's just because I don't know how to work my printer. I never know how it's coming out. So. <laughs> okay. The Christian belief system that we should follow as Christians, uh, our authority comes from the scriptures. We went through that, right? And we have the references here. Um, yeah, back when we did this, I'm not going to read the paragraphs on this. Authority uh, of the scriptures. Um, based on the authority of the scriptures, we believe in a trinity, correct? Yes. Right. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We went through that. Okay? You have the verses on here. God the Father. We went through the explanation, which is a short one, so I'll read it. God the Father created all things in six little days for His glory according to His own will. 
uh, references uh, Revelation 4.11. Through his son Jesus Christ, he upholds all things by the word of his power and grace, exercising sovereign headship over all creation, providence, and redemption. Has anybody got a problem with that? Because it's not my words. No. Anybody disagree? It's okay if you disagree, because I may have thrown something in here to see if you pay attention. Hmm. I don't disagree, but I remember once hearing that God one day is like Absolutely. Um, everybody knows what she's referenced. But the big thing that's happened more so in the last hundred years or so is because it's, it was up until then pretty much understood that God created everything in six literal days, right? And then all of a sudden what we have is, what are you smile about? <laughs> you know? Not that we're adverse to the scientific community, but the phrase that people hear, science tells us such and such, science tells us this, science tells us that. Does science tell us anything? Has science ever told anybody anything here? Yes. No? Yes? Yes. yes. What, what has science told us? Go for monkeys. <laughs> It all depends on what kind of science you're talking about. Biology, the sun, plants, molecules, atoms, so those are not verifiable science. The theory of evolution, that's a whole, that's a joke. Does science tell us that? Not real science. Actually, on the contrary, it says that everything just abruptly appeared. That's what I'm getting. Here's, here's the point. Science doesn't tell us anything. Nothing. Scientists do. That's the difference. So you have to understand interpretation, more importantly, the Colombo factor motive that we talked about. What's their motive? Okay? We've had, especially for the last 100, 150 years, an enormous amount, explosion of information. It's been discovered by scientific community and everything else, whether it's biology, archaeology, medical, um, Astrology, not the goofy astrology, but you know, astrological stuff, the cosmos. Uh, but science doesn't tell us anything. Scientists tell us. So you have to understand the source that they're interpreting what the science reveals. Yes? Yeah. Does that mean that we also should just jump to conclusions if science, if science reveals things that we would like to believe prove the Bible? Absolutely not. Because science revealed is different than science telling. That's the key. Uh, and if you go back and look at it point by point, and of course some of you may remember this, this class has changed a lot. Probably three, four years ago, we did some of the scientific stuff in the class that shows where some of this stuff comes from. And when you get right down to it, um, the explanations that have come out of the scientific community end up confirming what the Bible had said 2,000 years before. Really. Now, not the theories and the hypothesis like Eric said. I mean, how old is the theory of evolution? 160 years, I think? Yeah, exactly. 1850? Yeah. Okay. So what? For all these thousands of years, nobody figured that out. I said, boom, hey, guess what? You were a monkey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If, if science doesn't prove that, science put out an hypothesis and said, well, we like it. But when you look at the nuts and bolts of it, it doesn't really play out that way. It's the same thing, and we went through this not too long ago, when we did the, the, the Cosmos thing. Um, where is the verse? I don't have my notes here, but we went through it. We're in the Old Testament, where he said, the earth is a sphere, and it's suspended in space. Before they had a telescope. Isaiah. Isaiah. But you had, what, 1,500, 2,000 years after that, they thought, that if you went too far in a boat, you were going to fall off the edge of the earth because it was flat. Okay. That's what science said. That's what people said science said. So, yeah, so understand, put it in context. Put it in context. Isaiah 40, 22. Which one was it? Isaiah 40, 22. Okay. You all look at it. I trust her. She's my wife. So she's all the uh, But the thing is, science, to go towards your question, and of course Ricardo said, because Ricardo's a teacher. <clears throat> You have to understand 
when people are telling them things, what's their motivation, and where are they getting their authority from? Okay. Now, us crazy, bumble-headed, backwoods country Christians, as we're known, right? Because we believe the Bible is true. Yet every time it bumps heads with something, it turns out it is true. And then it's just I so just going right past because that's, there's a motivation there. Okay? And the motivation is this. The same demons, the power that the demons got that begged Jesus and knew he was the Son of God when they came out of the tomb and begged him, let me go into the pigs. Don't torment us before our time. Right? How would they know? How would they know? What was the scientific explanation for that? Again, like I said, I don't think they had internet or TV in the tomb. You know? But yet, they recognized him for what he was. Okay? Same thing. Show me the body that they can't produce, and I'll believe that maybe he didn't rise from the dead. Same thing. Okay? Um, but So what we're doing is we're basing our entire hypothesis, if you want to call it that, until we come to the conclusion, on our authority, which is the scriptures. Okay? So that's where we're getting at now. We're through God the Father. Then we did God the Son. Okay? And again, you have the verses on there. We explain this is the belief system that our authority tells us that there, bless you, that there is God the Father and God the Son. Okay? The scripture references you have on there, we went through these. Um, this is where God, I didn't, I didn't come up with it and say this is my idea. Okay? This is what the scriptures, which we're considering the authority, says about the Son. Yeah? I just got a quick question. Uh, under God the Father, you say God the Father created all things in the world day. And many times people thought that Jesus was the creator. Yes. Okay. You know, because, you know, in, in what you were saying up there, you know, in the beginning was the word. And, well, right here. Because no, we have the reference here under God the Son, John 1.1. 1, right. 1. Yeah, John 1.1. 1, 1, yep. Right, that, that the word created, you know, so he the was world. there. Remember, it's a right. trinity. It's a trinity. They were yeah, there for there. eternity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As a finite right. mind, we're going to have a hard time comprehending exactly where all that's coming from. That the fact that there is God the Father, then there's God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, yet they're all three all together. Right. Yeah. Well, I can't explain yeah. that. Yeah. But Paul Paul even said it's a mystery yeah. to us. Right. There are some things that are not we're not going to comprehend. Right. We are finite beings <laughs> with a finite mind. So they were all there when the creation happened and they were all yes. there. Yeah, it says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word Jesus. was God. Yeah. And then you skip down a few verses and the word became flesh, right? right? We all know what that means. That was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. As a man. Right. Now, if you sit down and try to pull it apart, it is kind of hard to comprehend. Well, how did God be the father and the son and then the son leaves becomes a man but yet you still got the father up here but yet he's the father he's the god too yet that's kind of hard to figure out and which is why if you haven't had the experience and understand the transformation by becoming a christ follower and realize yes it goes right back to genesis it starts there one one when god created the heavens and the earth forward to 126 that God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea. So already there's reference in book one yes. of our likeness. Of yeah, remember, our likeness does not mean we're all going to look right. like Charles right. Heston. That's yeah, not what he's talking about. There's another part of Isaiah 2, I forgot the verse, but it says um, that God's going to come down. He's going to extend his right arm down to us. It's like he's like he's talking about a part of his body is going to come down. He refers right. like to his right arm. Remember, God, God is not the flesh and blood. God is a spirit. Right? No man has seen God. Isn't it also and with faith? You have to have the faith to believe what the Bible says. Well, this is part of it is a faith. It makes well, it all work. Right? He feels himself enough. You know, you go in Romans 1 where he says, it's pretty evident that I did this. And remember, uh, the rich man and Lazarus, Lazarus dies, and he goes up there, and, he, and, he, and the rich man said, just send Lazarus back and tell my brother so they don't come here because they don't believe this. And he said, they didn't believe the prophets. 
someone came back from the dead, they're not going to believe. Now here we are 2,000 years later. Somebody came back from the dead. They still don't believe. You know, so the faith part has to come in. It has to come in. But it's not like voodoo magic. I mean, it's not a magical thing. You know, God doesn't need magical tricks or any of this. He said, this is it. Here's the evidence. I'm sending all this. I'm going to tell you beforehand how we're going to get there. You've got to recognize it. You've got to accept it. And then we're good. If you don't, it always comes to me when someone says, prove that God exists. How so <coughs> much more can you do that, that's what I mean. than come you know, down in the form of yeah, flesh? It's like, it's like the thing we went through three, four years ago where you have to have a lot more faith to be an atheist than you do a Christian. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. come right down to it. Okay? Right here. Yeah. Yeah. You believe that God yeah. created everything. You believe he spoke the world into existence. He could certainly be three people in one time. You would think so. Yeah. Like, it's enough proof for virgin. You have a baby. Yeah. So, you know, that's what I usually tell people. You, you believe in God. Yeah, then it sure is enough proof for me. Yeah. Okay. Now we went. Let's see. God the Spirit. We've got our verses here. Uh, the explanations here and the verse references are there. Those did it. And then if you can't take a look at it. There's plenty of verses for this. Uh, again, this is using our authority, which is the Scriptures. What does the Scriptures say about God the Spirit? That's that's where this came from. Okay. This wasn't. Uh, like David, it didn't come off of Joel Olsen. This came, this came out of one. Okay. Now, wait, that's all authority we're using to say about the relationship of God to mankind. Uh, all right, Lador, are you going to be the reader? Sure. Just read the paragraph on our sheet because it's not up here. God created mankind, male and female, in his own image and likeness, free of sin, to glorify himself and enjoy his fellowship. Tempted by Satan, but in the sovereign plan of God, man freely chose to disobey God bringing sin, death, and condemnation to all mankind. All human beings, therefore, are totally depraved by nature and by choice. Alienated from God without defense or excuse and subject to God's righteous yeah. wrath, all of mankind is in the desperate need of the Savior. Yeah, everybody good with that explanation? Because that is my explanation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I kind of did that one. But I didn't make I, I used the references to back which we're going to go to. Everybody good with that? Yeah. 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 Everybody kind of agree with that? <laughs> what about the... Uh, Everybody okay with that? <laughs> Trust me, we are the Okay? Um, here's again relationship to mankind from our authoritative source, the Bible. The fall. Genesis 3, 1 to 6. We got the we got the references on your thing, we got the verses here. It said, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals. The Lord God had made, he said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Okay. The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. Okay. Here's where the relationship of mankind goes downhill really fast according to our authority. Now, is it the fault of the woman? Yes. <laughs> All right, I said that's it. This is this is where the relationship of mankind changed. Yeah. Right? Okay. Who's saying this? The serpent. Okay. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you can eat from it, your own eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. How's that work in life? Everybody coming out good with that one? Yeah. I mean, so that was like the first lie ever told. Now think about this. Answer honestly. Everybody, you don't have to answer me, but just think about this and honestly. If you could really see what was going to happen on Monday, would you really want to? No. no. I mean, that, just think about it. It's easy to say no, and I agree. I don't. But you think about, well, you know what? I would know what the score of the basketball game was. I could make a bet. Right? Uh, 
I would know that I'm going to get in a car wreck tomorrow, so I don't need to go down Royal Mall, right? You know, so you can say, hey, this is a good thing. But would you really want to know? Yeah. Would you? No. Yeah. 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 Sometimes ignorance is bliss. It really is. Mankind, in the form of Adam and Eve, they were in blissful ignorance. And they were happy. They were happy. They didn't even have clothes on. They didn't know the you know, I'm assuming they were pretty good looking people. I don't know. But they didn't care. They didn't care. Ignorance in that form would be bliss. Right? Not about the naked stuff. I'm talking about the junk. You're not aware of problems because it's not your problem. There are no problems. We just made it our problem is what happened. Okay? When a woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Now, just just a little bit. Okay. She gave some to who? Her husband. Okay. But he was with her from the beginning. He was watching the game. He wasn't paying attention. Okay. Why not? Why is it saying exactly. her husband? Why not, not her partner? Could have the whole thing. Her domestic partner. Why did it say that? Because the Bible begins in Because it was Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we get to the parts where God's talking. Mike's going to read it. He's got the God. <laughs> okay, let's go to the New Testament. Just see how, you know, let's see how a relationship from mankind to God. <laughs> This is Romans 3, 10 to 19. I'm going to try and read it until the voice gets out. As it is written, there is none, no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Before we go farther, is he beating around the bush? No. 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 I mean, it's pretty that. Okay, all of you stink. You've all screwed up. You're stupid, you're ignorant, and you just make mistake after mistake after mistake. That's where we are. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's where we are. Okay, again, this is our relationship as man come out to a holy God. Their throats are open graves, their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Really sugarcoat this. Really sugarcoat. <laughs> their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world accountable to God. Okay? This is New Testament. This is not the Old Testament. For those who say all that stuff applied back then. Well, he's just saying it's all the same thing. And of course, again, you shake your you know where I'm going here. There's a difference from being under the law and under grace. Okay? We're not getting to that now. We're talking about mankind's relationship. Okay. God's wrath against sinful humanity. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. What suppress the truth mean? Deny. Who said deny? Yeah. Okay. Although they know not to What I'm asking. Don't She has the answers at home. What I'm Y'all know I'm deaf. Okay. Answers at home. She's got the answers at home. Then. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun. Okay. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Okay. Again, these are scriptural references from our source of authority, the Bible, right? This is what it says. And if you want to, uh, I don't have it in there, and we're not going to go through it now, but it's long. If you want to understand how serious this is, let's see. Leviticus. Oh, yes. If you want to do this, everybody, if you have a pencil, write down this, just uh, and just read this. Leviticus chapter 26, when you go home. The whole chapter, because it's not one sentence. You know what I'm talking about, right? I just read it. Okay. 
Okay, here's just a couple of glimpses. We're not going to read it now. Verse 3, if you follow my statutes and faithfully observe my commandments, I will give you rain at the right time, and the land will yield its produce, and the trees of the field will bear their fruit. Your threshing will continue until grape harvest, and the grape harvest will continue until sowing time, and so on and so on. What he's saying is, you do what I tell you, everything's going to work just fine. Now, if you get farther into the chapter, which you really need, everybody needs to read this, okay? Let's see here. Okay, you go to verse 14, just, just touching a couple things. But if you do not obey me and observe all these commandments, if you reject my statutes and despise my ordinances, what we're talking about here, right? Prove those things and practice them, okay? Then I will do this to you, colon, for emphasis, okay? I don't know if it was in the original Hebrew if it had a colon in there, but it's here. I will bring terror on you, wasting disease and fever that will cause your eyes to fail and your life to ebb away. You will sow your seed in vain because your enemies will eat it. So, I mean, you know, he's serious. He's saying, and again, this, I've read a couple of verses here. Read Leviticus 26. I mean, number one, it'll scare you straight when you realize it. Because what he's saying is, okay, if you want to be good and proper, do this. A, B, C, D. And you'll be fine. But if you don't, well, what to do, basically? And I, I, just read it. Just read it. Yeah. And I have a question, like, uh, like especially with Leviticus, uh, like, sometimes there's some sort of parts of the Leviticus where people uh, get just really too uh, conservative. Too far they, yeah, they go too crazy about it. And yeah. then sometimes we piece, we piece it apart and we say, well, Leviticus, it meant this, even though it says this. It's not really as harsh right. as it Now, that's not this, but I understand what you said. A lot of it was the uh, observances and the the directions that he gave on certain things. Right. And again, this was pre-Redeemer, okay. Okay. which was the key. Right. And once the New Covenant came in, remember, Jesus said, well, actually, I think it was Paul when it said, all that stuff that you're not supposed to eat under the observances of the temple, it's okay, it's clean, you can eat. Right. Okay? Because it was changed. It didn't do away with it. Because remember, Jesus observed the letter of the law. And remember what he said when they accused him that you healed somebody on the Sabbath. Right. Right? Pretty bad. You get killed for that. Right? What did he say? Is it better for me to let someone lay there on the Sabbath or to take care of it? You know, and he said, old things have passed away, all things will become new. He was setting it up, saying, not that now the laws, of course, today we're not required to do the temple set up like the tabernacle was. And again, Dorf, you, you went through the tabernacle and the other thing. Um, uh, as we get cared or Ross, you guys will know this stuff. Um, there was reasons why everything was done the way it was done. And the way they had to prepare things, what they ate, how they, when they ate, what they did. Because remember, what we mentioned here two, three weeks ago, God was creating a nation that started with, you remember, we went through this. Yeah, we did this not too long ago. Um, 70 people went to Egypt. Remember? It was 70 people. And that was the nation of Israel. Right? What was what was Israel's name before? Right. The entire nation was Jacob and his family. It was about 70 of them. He had to create a nation. And to do that, he moved, it's, yeah, it's another thing, but he moved them all down there to protect them while he's building a nation because, and we went through this, to have a nation you have to have what? You have to have land, you have to have the law, and you have to have a people. You have to have a people. Now, if they stayed in the land of Canaan, number one, they'd be dead because it was a family. But because of preparation, Joseph, who they all assumed was dead, was sent ahead, trained up through the Egyptian hierarchy and became the number two man and provided a way to allow the nation to continue to live. Of course, they spent 430 years there in captivity. But when they left, and we went through this, if I remember the video we did about the Red Sea, when they left, how many people did we have? In the nation? It was over 2 million, most accounts, right? Um, so they had, now they had people, but they didn't have law, and they didn't have a land. But what happened? Who was their father? Abraham. Abraham. Right? What was the Abrahamic covenant? I will give you this land. Right? 
and thou may be the father of many nations. Well, he promised he would give
that he is the head over everything for the church, not John Smith, right? Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not Charles Taylor, not the teapot guy, not the soccer guy. And this is this is what it says. That if our authority is correct, that's it. We're in good shape. Okay. Um, now at the church. Okay. We're going to try. Let's go five minutes trying to get it. Okay, I'm not going to read this. We're just going to do the scriptures real quick. This is what it says about the church. Uh, Acts 2, 42 to 46, which is where a lot of it's laid out about the church and how it's coming to be, what it's for, what it's supposed to do, what it's not supposed to do. Uh, fellowship of the believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship. What's the apostles' teaching? We have We have Right. To the breaking of bread and to prayer, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Now, this does not mean you go be Jim Jones or go down to Andrew to pray and stuff. That's not what he's talking about. But what it says is the church is now a family. You watch out for each other. You take care of each other. Probably it should be a lot better than what our families are, which are very dysfunctional. So you don't want to base it on that. Okay? Now, they sold property, they sold property possessions to give to one another who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts. First Corinthians 14, 26. The order of worship. When then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you has a hymn, or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. Which means. Just to be hard and cruel, because we got a pretty big church. We got some goofy people. We got some good people. Okay, probably more goofy. Uh, if it's not building up the church, don't do it. Just don't do it. Okay. Matthew 28, 18, 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, "All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me." Who? Jesus. Jesus. All of it. All of it. Not. He didn't leave anything out. Okay. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the day. Everybody's heard that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. What's the purpose of the church? To be disciples. Baptize them. Right there. To grow. Yeah. Right there. To go to the church. That's our purpose. The purpose is not to come together and feel good. And, you know, all that stuff's okay. But that's the purpose, to spread the gospel. Because remember, once the fulfillment of the allotment of the chosen one, it's coming back. Okay? We have to be held accountable for that. Okay. Ephesians 4, 16. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. We all have different parts. We all have different things to do. Right? Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to the number that day. Pentecost. What are they talking about? Pentecost. That's basically what we know as the church of today is where it started. That's where the foundation was laid. Okay? Like David corrected me the other night. It was laid before the creation, but this is when it manifests itself. Okay? We're not reading the paragraph here because I'm out of time and where you all have to see how quickly we do it. Okay. Uh, these are the commandments that, according to our authority, we're supposed to be related to baptism and communion. Well, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. It's symbolic. Not required to be saved, but what are the two things we were required to observe? Baptism and communion, right? For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like this. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. What's the body of sin? The world. It's us. Because we're going to have a glorified body, right? Sin doesn't touch the glorified body. Okay, I'm not going to read all these verses. We're going to throw this more. It's, the, the verse references are on here. Read them. I'll get to the last one, which is. Okay. 
things to come. This is what our authority says about what's coming. Again, we're doing the same thing we did with every world religion and every belief system. Where they get their information from, what it means, and what the relationship is. Not the teapot. Okay? They have their own thing. Okay. For believers who have died, this is 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not give grief give grief to like the rest of mankind who have no hope. Again, we've all lost loved ones. We're probably all going to lose loved ones. It's tough. It's really tough. Uh, grieving's not bad, just in the right context. Understand, uh, Mike and I was talking, which is a whole other thing to somebody who we know is going to go and say, hey, what is it, Mike? Mike, he's on a cruise. We'll see him when he gets off. Okay? We're supposed to understand that. It's just a moment in time and we'll be united with him. Okay? For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep with him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. Everybody understands what that means. The dead in Christ will rise first. Right? Okay. Again, this is, this is what our belief system says based on our, the authority we use for our relationship with things to come. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Okay? He's telling you, don't grieve. This is the way it works. This is it. After that, those who are still alive, today it's us, okay? We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And our left will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. That's part of what we're supposed to do as a church. Encourage each other. This is what's coming. Okay? Now, the bad stuff, which there's a whole bunch of that, because once you get past the first four chapters of Revelation, which is the church age which we're in, now it's into the future stuff. You don't want to be here for that. Okay? You don't want to be here for that. Okay? Acts 1 3. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave them many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. What's the kingdom of God? It's coming. It's what's coming. He was instructing them. Okay? Uh, let me get this. I got one thing to say before we this. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Hebrews 7, 25, 26. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly meets our needs. One who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. That's it. Now. Okay, that is, understand what we just did. We did not create a belief system. We did not define a belief system. We referenced what our belief system should be based on the authority that we all agree is the word God. Right? Take the verses, go through them and understand where it comes from. It's very easy to all the stuff going on to get sidetracked, especially if you watch TV, if you don't watch Christian TV, be careful. Because they're really good at it, and it's not all true. So understand, go to the authority, Please take this. This is the last installment of this lesson we're going to do with. Just read the, read the verses. Read the verses and understand. If you disagree with it, great. You disagree with the Word of God. If it's not me, it's, it's the verses. Okay, that's what it says. If you have questions, come back. We'll do it again. Could Larry be here next week, Morning. Bring him back next week for Larry. <laughs> really good. Okay. Now, do we have time to watch the song? The song or do I... Are you going to do it, Ross? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Stand if you're The song gives us a chance to do it.
Father, we thank you so much for this this uh, lesson that Mark brought for us today, God. We thank you for the authority of Scripture. We, we, we pray that you would always have us uh, be the carriers of your word to the world, Lord. Use us in every which way that you want. Uh, please bless this week as we go and, and be with us in all of our endeavors. And uh, we love you, Lord. We give this night to you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Did anybody not get a prayer to pick? Hey, Cliff. Yeah. 31st of May. May. What night is that? Friday night. You're welcome. Not going.